Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with natural log, which is ln. ln stands for natural log, or some people say Napier's log, something like that. Anyways, ln is used for a special case where the base is e, which is Euler's number. The only thing I know about Euler's number is it's about 2.7. I don't know any other digits. Anyways, I never need to. So now, this is a log equation, but we're going to turn it into an exponential equation. Probably. Why? You will see in a little bit how this goes. So first of all, I want to get ln x, not the reciprocal of ln x. So let's go ahead and flip both sides. That gives us ln x equals 2n pi over negative i. Obviously, you don't want a negative i at the bottom either. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by i. Normally I would multiply by negative i if I had an i at the bottom, but since negative i and i are conjugates, I can just multiply negative i by i to get negative i squared. What is negative i squared? If you said 1, you're right about it, because i squared is defined as negative 1. So i is one of the square roots of negative 1, because the other one is negative i, and i squared is always negative 1. Okay? So, what am I getting? 2n pi. Of course, when you multiply by i, you also have to multiply the top. So that's going to give us 2n pi i divided by 1. Or just 2n pi i. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. ln x equals 2n pi i. Now, to get x from here, we would need to do what? e to the power of both sides, right? Because we do know, hopefully we do, that e to the power ln x equals x. So if you want x, you need to do e to the power ln x, but you need to do e to the power on both sides. Okay, what is that going to give me? Let's see. So from here we got the solution, right? So this is the answer. But obviously you want to write it in a nicer way, don't you? You probably do, so I'm guessing. Let's go ahead and do that. What does 2 and pi i represent, right? So we kind of need to talk about a little bit about Euler's formula. Okay, so Euler is a great mathematician, needless to say. He's one of the greatest, I think, the greatest. Anyways, he said, okay, e to the power i x, or I shouldn't use x because we already have an x there. e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Now, this is awesome because it allows you to turn a complex number in the form x plus yi to an exponential form, and working with exponentials is a lot easier. For example, you can take this expression, raise it to the, I don't know, 20th power, and then it's just going to be e to the power i 20 theta, or e to the power 20 i theta, however you want to write it, doesn't matter. But notice that if you try to expand this using the binomial theorem, you're going to have 21 terms. So that's going to be super duper messy. But with the exponential form or the polar form, things are a lot easier. Make sense? Okay, great. So hopefully we can take advantage of this formula. Let's clear up this area so we can work with this. So wh what are we going to do with this formula? Well, I do have my x in terms of this, e to the power something. So hopefully, I can use this to turn it into something like this. Because, why would I want to do that? Why can't you leave it like this? You could, but to writing it in this x plus y i form, or i y form, some people write it, this as x plus i y. By the way, I'm assuming that the modulus is 1 in this case, which is the case, by the way, because for my x, there's nothing in front of e to the power something, so the modulus is 1. But if I had something like this, 2 and pi i plus some, I don't know, k, then obviously you would have e to the k as our modulus. That's a different story, but in this case, k is 0. Make sense? So e to the z, 0 is 1, which means the modulus for my number is 1. Awesome. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn our exponential into this form, and then we're going to go ahead and simplify it. Let's go ahead and do it. That's going to be fun. So e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. But what is theta? Well, theta is 
what multiplies i in the exponent. So what is i multiplied by? 2n pi. So that's your theta. Make sense? Well, that's a multiple of 2 pi. Think about it. When you have the unit circle or just the coordinate system, and you have a theta angle, which is a multiple of 2 pi, you're basically going to stay here and just make rotations, right? So what does that mean? Let's find out. So e to the power i theta equals this. So e to the power 2n pi, 2n pi i is just going to be, since this is my theta, this is going to equal cosine of 2n pi plus i times sine of 2n pi. Okay? What is cosine of 2n pi? Well, we just said that 2n pi is an integer multiple of 2 pi because n is an integer, remember that, right? So we can basically just, it, this is equivalent to cosine 2 pi or cosine 0. What is cosine 0? For example, if n is equal to 0, this is cosine 0 plus i sine 0. What is cosine 0? Do you know? Well, cosine 0 is 1. And sine 0 is 0. So this is 1 plus i times 0, which is 1. What happens if n is equal to 1? Then you get cosine of 2 pi plus i sine of 2 pi. And what is cosine of 2 pi? 1 again. Sine of 2 pi is 0. So this is going to be 0, i times i. And that's going to be 1 again. So in other words, x is equal to 1. <laughs> OK, so here's the problem. If x is equal to 1, we're going to run into an issue here because we have 1 over ln x equals this and ln 1 is equal to 0. But not if you write 1 as a complex number, then it's not going to be 0 because it's going to be 0 plus something. Think about it. If you have e to the power 2 and pi i, and this is kind of 1 times, right? And if you ln it, you're going to get ln 1 plus ln e to the power something, which is 2n pi i, but this is 0, so you're going to end up with 2n pi i. Okay? Or we could just say, hey, x is equal to e to the power 2n pi i. All right? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. By the way, when you look at an equation like this, I didn't really introduce anything... Uh, what is it called? Uh, an alternative method. But if you kind of think about this problem, when I get ln x is equal to 2n pi i, could I be going a different route? ln x equals 2n pi i. Is there another way to approach this problem? You could probably write the x as, because x is a complex number, supposed to be, you can write it as a plus b i, and then write it in polar form, and then ln it, separate the real and imaginary parts, and so on and so forth. Hopefully, you're going to find something from there, too. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.